Hello there, Nandini here with a brand new video on the Craft Angles YouTube channel. This is my diary for 2023 and honestly it looks a little bit boring. So I decided to personalize the cover. I got this idea after watching a video by Khyati Kothari, the owner of Craft Angles, where she demonstrated all the wonderful ways to use the transferred sheets. These are image transfer sheets with really gorgeous images. I had a great time experimenting with lots of mixed media supplies and I'm very very happy with my new upcycled diary. So let's get started. The first step is to prep the surface with gesso or chalk paint so that we have a blank surface to work with. I'm using the snow white chalk paint for this. This is my first time using the Craft Angles chalk paints and I love their quality. I really love the plastic stopper instead of a foil under the cap which ensures that the colors last longer and the bottles stay cleaner. I'm simply pouring a small puddle of paint on the diary cover and using the sponge brush to spread it evenly. Once I'm satisfied with the coverage, I will leave the paint to air dry while I start with the rest of the prep. I'm using the Floral Windows 4 transfer it sheet for my project today. I will begin by cutting out the image I want from the sheet. I like to fussy cut along the edges of the image so that only a small bit of white shows around. The diary is now completely dry. Before I transfer the image, I want to create the background. I want the image at the center of my cover and I'll be adding paint to the top right and bottom left of the cover. I want to match the color of my background with the purplish brown bricks on the image. I will get this shade by using plum picking chalk paint as the base. To create more brown tones, I'm adding some green fields and ruby red chalk paints. I don't have a brown chalk paint handy. So the easiest way to create it is to add two contrasting colors, green and red. A little bit of Midnight Dreams, uh, which is a black chalk paint will darken the color to the shade I want. Remember to add colors gradually whenever mixing paints. Also mix enough paint so that you don't run out of it midway. Once I am satisfied with the shade I created, I will use a sponge brush to dab the paint on the cover. The small amount of snow white chalk paint will help me blend the color better so that there are no harsh lines. I am using a tissue to mop up the extra paint so that it doesn't look too dark. The next step is to add some texture to the cover using white texture paste and a stencil. I used a stencil from my stash, though I wish I had the Craft Angles brick stencil which is perfect since it has a shabby look which mimics the bricks on the transferred image perfectly. I like to use my palette knife for this work but you can use an old credit card or a stiff piece of cardboard to apply the texture paste through the stencil. I am applying it a bit randomly as I want a more artsy look. We can always add more texture paste later. Now comes the fun part, the image transfer. First, peel the thin sheet of plastic which covers the transfer it image. Next, lay the image face down on the project and press it down firmly. The adhesive on the image will adhere the image to the cover, ensuring that it doesn't move during the transfer process. For the actual transfer of the image, I will begin from the center of the image and go towards the side, pressing down gently but firmly with a damp sponge. I have a bowl of water handy and keep dipping the sponge in this so that my sponge doesn't dry out. This process takes some time and patience as it must be done slowly to avoid any damage to the image being transferred. Keep doing it till the backing paper is soaked through and turns translucent. At some point, you will feel the backing paper peeling off. Gently remove it from the cover using the damp sponge to loosen any stubborn bits. I'm bringing back the stencil and the texture paste to add some more brick detail. Now 
Once I am satisfied with my look, I will set the diary aside to dry completely. I used the oval ornamental frame dies to die cut 6 pieces out of white cardstock. The die comes in two parts, the ornamental frame and the oval die. Here is a small trick to make sure that all the die cuts are identical. I aligned the dies carefully and used washi tape to hold them together. The tape ensured that the two dies did not move while die cutting and I got die cuts that I can now stack and create a thick frame. For the chipboard leaves, I colored them using snow white chalk paint tinted with evergreen and poison ivy liquid watercolors. These watercolors are intensely pigmented and just a tiny drop goes a long way. Once the coloring is done, I will let them air dry. My embellishments are now ready. I have the thick frame, the oval label with the year stamped in blacking and the chipboard leaves. Before I do the final assembly, I want to add some more texture to the white areas as well as the leaves. I'm using the beautiful bloom border stamp to do this. This stamp has a very intricate design which is perfect for adding more interest to flat surfaces. I mounted the stamp on a large acrylic block and inked it with dark blue archival ink. After stamping off the ink once, I press the stamp over the white areas. I will also press the chipboard leaves over the stamp to get some added texture on them. While the ink dries, I will glue the ornate frame on the cover with liquid glue. Since the liquid glue will take some time to dry, I am placing the acrylic block on top to weigh it down. I am adding the leaves next in the top left corner. They add some dimension to the project balancing the frame. I have tried to keep the number of dimensional elements at a minimum as I use this diary every day and usually carry it around in my purse. I don't want to take a chance of bits falling off later. The last step is to add the oval label. I am simply applying liquid glue generously to the cover and pushing the label into the frame. And with that, my upcycle diary is ready. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am new to the transferred sheets. This project was as much a fun learning experience for me as it was for you. Can you think of more projects using the transferred sheets? Are there any objects around you right now? that you can think of upcycling, please do mention them in the comments below. I look forward to hearing your ideas and suggestions. So till we meet again, bye and take care.